What's up, Whoopers? It's Vice here, and today we're going to have a look at a goofy new deck that I've been working on. It's got a focus on the Scizor, and if you've been watching me live on Twitch, you'll know that I have quite a fascination with, with this card. Uh, Punishing Scissors does 10 plus 50 more for each of your opponent's abilities in play for just a single metal energy. And being that it's stage one, it's relatively easy to get into play, and it has 140 HP, so it's got uh, a bit of heft, which might be lost on some other stage one Pokemon. You know, if you think Curlio, for example, only has 80. So 140, quite a lot to work with. Gives it a bit more bulk to, to work with in the late game against decks such as Lost Zone Box. But before I jump too far ahead, we want to talk about the Pokemon I decided to pair the Sizzle with, and that's this Clefable. So Clefable from 151 has got a very interesting attack, More Moon, uh, does 50 damage. If your opponent's Pokemon is knocked out by damage from this attack, you take one more prize. Now, there are there is a, like, a little bit of, um, hmm, shall we say, um, a bit of a, a clash in styles, right? Because Clefable's attack, More Moon, is something that we fulfill with Reversal Energy. It's what allows us to use an attack like that. Um, but... The, the, the issue is, is we're playing, you know, we're playing Scizor, and it's quick, and it's aggressive, and it's wanting to take the, the lead a lot of the time. So the way that I look at, at Clefable and the way that I've worked it into the deck is only at, like, a, a thin 2-2 two and two line, and the reason for that is just because we're not, we're not, like, trying to lead with it, but we're trying to make up for lost ground with it instead so for example if we're in a in a prize trade against the likes of maridon okay you swing heavy with the scissor you do 100 and, or you do like 210 for example into a maridon and maybe you just whiff the ko well when you um in inevitably lose a prize to them as they retaliate with with their Pokemon, you then have an opportunity to follow up with Clefable, use more Moon, take an extra prize as you get the KO, and swing things a bit more into your favor, right? So that's the idea. I I'm kind of looking at Scizor as being like, while it's strong, there are various ways an opponent can play around it. And when they try to play around it, we try to punish them with the Clefable. And, you know, it, it, it doesn't always work out. I like it, and it it does sort of prove itself time and again as I play it. So let's go through some of the individual Pokemon, and then I've got a game or two coming up for you, so hang around for that. Now, uh, one of the other 151 cards in this deck is this Cypher. The really important thing to pay attention to is the free retreat down there in the corner. Very, very handy being able to uh, save your retreat till the very end of your turn. So if you've got a bunch of cards to play and you don't know if you're going to be able to attack with Clefable or if you need to press on with Scizor, you can just sit a Scyther active and you can just play through and wait. Not bad. Uh, we already talked about Clefable and you've got some familiar suspects in the Manaphy and the Mew, both there as sort of mandatory... Well, Mew not so much, but Manaphy is quite mandatory in the face of Radiant Greninja. you got Mew here to help you set up, look for items. On turn one especially, since we run four VIP pass. you got Radiant Serena here. And this is our tech to try and stave off the looming threat that is Sableye, Elegant Heal, being able to heal off the damage that that Pokemon can put out and generally just be a nuisance when it comes to Sableye math. We've got a familiar 331 Gallade line, the Curlier, of course, very good at grinding through the cards in your deck and making sure that you have access to some kind of consistency engine. Gallade, of course, very strong ability with the Buddy Catch and can also set up for uh, KOs with Swirling Slice. So not only can you put 160 onto an opponent's, let's say, two prize Pokemon, you can swing the energy back to your bench, get your Clefable ready to go. What do you knock out in that situation? Do you take out the Gallade and remove this consistency Pokemon, or do you target down the Clefable because you're worried about Moon? Who knows? Um, 
one of the really important other aspects to the combo too is I've got the Defiance Band in there and it really benefits both Pokemon, right? Because sometimes Scizor is lacking in some, um, you know, damage calculations. So having access to Defiance Band might get you the KO when you normally might not be able to. But also Defiance Band uh, really helps make Clefable... Uh, quite a bit more compelling a bit more interesting because being able to add that 30 damage uh when you attack with clefable because remember in order to attack with clefable you have to be losing to use the reversal energy so defiance band is another piece of that combo and we've got just an arvin in here to help us get it the the deck already has three defiance bands so i felt that uh we could cut a little bit more into the arvin line in order to uh, make room for other cards. So, on the search front, you've got VIPs, Level Wall, Ultra Ball, to search out your Pokemon. Energy Search here might seem like an odd choice, but you can combo it with the Arvin to search for an energy. Although, I wouldn't fault you for swapping this out for just a sixth um, metal energy. That would be fine too. We've got Super Rods at a two of just to get back your Pokemon and energy plenty of targets there and miriam is here to just make things a bit more smooth when it comes to recovering things like whole galleid lines and and things like that it is a single prize deck so and you know the majority of the pokemon are evolving too so there's plenty of pokemon that hit the discard pile that you might want to target with miriam three iono three bosses orders very important in a deck that is a single prize attacking deck that it can target down what it wants to attack at any given moment. So at least a three of is quite good. I've got a worker here just for some extra draw. And because we only run the three Artisan, it's good to be able to uh, remove Path of the Peak because Path of the Peak removes abilities and that affects the damage calculation of Punishing Scissors. And then four Reversal, five Metal Energy. Pretty, pretty straightforward. So look, I got a game coming up for you. If you enjoy decks that look like this, please consider subscribing to me on YouTube or maybe catch me on Twitch. I'm streaming five nights a week these days, so it would be wonderful to see you over there. All right, uh, I'll see you in the next live stream or video. So take care, goodbye, see ya, goodbye. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm down. I'm down for Altaro to exist. This seems like a reasonable card. A bulky healing Pokemon seems nice, you know. And then there's the Mousehold EX. Alright, so let's read it. Uh, solidarity. So if it's in the active spot and it's damaged, by an attack, put three damage counters on the attacking Pokemon for each of your Tandem Mouse and Mousehold in play. Um, including Pokemon EX. So... Assuming that you get six into play, because you, you can do stuff like use Zoroark EX with this thing. Uh, Zoroark EX. Maybe we get a Zoroark EX, who knows. Uh, because we got Zoroark from Evolving Skies in format still, uh, you could have six Pokemon in play. Right? So what? Six by three? Eighteen? So you could basically... <laughs> Eighteen damage counters? Ooh. Ouch. And then you've just got to have like two EXs in play, right? So then even bosses' orders is another thing. All right, so we got a bit of a classic shaping up here. We got the Charizard, and they don't know what we're playing, so they've already sort of overplayed with the Entei and the Mew. So let's go VIP, and we want to go. Hmm. I think we're gonna leave the Clefairy in the active. Right, because we don't we don't need Clefairy straight away. We're gonna do this. And I want these. Yep. Um and I'm thinking I'm thinking Iono. Cause I wanna get like oh Actually I don't know. I don't know. This hand is like kind of alright to sit on. Because if we assume that this Entei is going to get an attack off, then I can go Reversal, Scizor, then Iono. You know what I mean? I think it's alright. I think it's alright to sit on it. 
Yeah. Like, what do I do if I Iono into just, like, bad cards? And I just threw away. I have to... You, what you have to consider is... Is the next six cards going to be better than the six I've got already? Or the five that I've got in this hand? By sitting on the Iono. Or by playing the Iono. Because then you're minus an Iono for the rest of the game. And then you've got to then find the energy plus the Scizor again. So two of those cards have to be those two. And then the rest of the cards have to be better than what I've already got. So... I think it's fine to just sit on this hand. There's no way they whiff this attack, right? Ain't no way. Hey, Ghost. How you doing? Tandem House is pretty cool. Um, Glycopod goes to the bench with its attack. It's pretty cool. Got stuff printed out for the thing. Good, 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 good. Uh, so what does this thing do? 170 damage, discard an energy if you do switch this Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. Great. It's like a new... There's a new dimension there to, you know, the things that you could do with a deck like Baxcalibur. Is it good? Eh. Don't know. It's alright. It's a lot of damage uh, for, a, for a hit and switch. Yeah, and you've got plenty of good Pokemon in the format at the moment to work with. We're going to promote the Scyther here. It's the least consequential. Oh, really? They hit us with the Iono, bro? Dude. Dude, are you kidding me? What is this hand? Bruh. Alright, we got a lot to work with with this hand. Thank you. Alright, no worries, Haley. We're gonna go reversal energy, and we're saved by the Iono. Is this fine? Yeah, I think this is much better than like using boss in this position. Fine, great. Because now we got level ball, we grab ourselves a Curlia. Curlier into play. And then, of course, the most obvious target for refinement is getting rid of the VIP pass. Now that we're past first turn of the game, we've got a nice little research to keep us going on the turn upcoming. 210. Very nice. Put them in range of a Clefable. Uh, more moon attack. So... Things are, are looking up. They're looking good. Rare candy. The Pidgeot EX emerges from the hand. And, of course, Quick Search, a very strong ability, allows an opponent to search their deck. Well, allows my opponent to search their deck for any card once per turn. Pretty good. Ah, disrespecting the Clefairy. An interesting choice. Interesting choice. What's this Zard deck going to try? They're going to try and cut us off at the, the draw. Right, by knocking out the Curlia. Um, presumably, they're going to retreat. But they can't do it very easily because you need... You need extra energy to retreat. So... Alright, Ghost. Alright. Promote the Cypher. Now. we got to figure it out. I'm going to put a reversal on the Clefairy. And then we're going to play the Research. It's a bit unfortunate needing to discard all these Metal Energies. But we do have ways to retrieve them. Okay. So that's a little disappointing, right? Because we didn't hit... Um, 
the Clefable or a way a way into it. So that's that's a little unfortunate, but never mind. We'll just we'll have to play it as it is. We'll figure it out. Uh, even with only one Curlia in the deck, I do value um, having multiple routes in play. We're going to leave the Scyther unevolved, because you never know. Um, yeah, and we'll just use Punishing Scissors. Even up the prize trade. Two to two now. But now they've got one less ability in play, so our damage output is a little lower. So we'll just have to figure it out. Okay? We've got one, two, three, four abilities in play. It, it is certainly enough to set up a two-hit KO on the Charizard, right? So Punishing Scissors plus Defiance Band is going to do 240. And then if we can get a Defiance Band onto the Clefable for the follow-up, 240 plus 80... That's still not enough, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, no. That's not good. That's not good. 240 plus 80 is 320, and Charizard is just outside of that range. Okay. All right. They made it easy for us. We have got this game. In the in that next month in the in the eight months since the last Aussie event, Pokemon has printed nearly a thousand new cards across five sets. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I'm gonna try a Zard deck uh, after after I get a good game on the books with this, so I can complete the YouTube video. So we'll promote the Scyther here. Free retreat gives us a lot of flexibility. Now this turn is pretty simple. From you know this card's uh, you know fr from our perspective, right? We're gonna go here. We can do this, right? And I'm probably I probably want to cash out the defiance band. Wait, so I'm gonna do what? Two sixty, two sixty plus fifty is not enough. Yeah, let's cash out the defiance band here and do the extra damage. They're in the lost zone, huh? What do we want in play? I, it, I mean, it's probably just Scyther, right? Ooh, don't play that card. Good energy search. I mean, I'm down to just uh, let it rip. The problem is going to be next turn. Wait, wait, wait. We could also just knock out the Pidgeot. That's an option too. Maybe knocking out Pidgeot's better to give us like more cards to work with. Yeah. Because this Mew is always going to be our win con actually. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, let's just knock out the Pidgeot. Because we do 290. Right, they've got five Pokemon with abilities in play. One, two, three, four, and the Pidgeot is number five. Punishing scissors, uh, scissors is plus 10, so that's 260. Defiance Band is 290. So we just knock out the, the, the Pidgeot. So we're, we're sort of uh, deviating a little bit from the plan, but this Manaphy and Mew sort of represent the way in which we win with more Moon. We do need to find, like, the last... Of I gotta learn to check my prizes, bro. Holy moly. Wow. Brazil has full Zard dominance, completely different from NA in Europe. Still feels like Pokemon doesn't respect what they have to gain by letting every region flex their creativity. Hmm. No, absolutely. Please feel free to share your thoughts because, you know, to introduce myself a little bit, uh, you know, I've been a competitive player since 2009. So I've I've been through many iterations of the, the TPC slash TPCI um, um, 
competitive format and structure. You know, my first tournaments were Battle Roads, City Championships, and, you know, I I've been playing since before Championship Points were a thing. Right, I played in a time where people uh, would sit out National Championships uh, to protect their ELO for, uh, to be able to go to Worlds, you know. Alright, we're going to try and figure this out. That's not going to help. That's not good. What do I do? Because we're in a little bit of strife. I think, I think it's put down Mew. We put down Mew. And then we're going to energy search. That was kind of lucky, actually. That it was even in there. Grab the energy search. Um, then we retreat into the Mew. Because we're just, like, wasting time on this turn, right? We're not doing a lot. Okay, Ultra Ball's quite good for us. Go Ultra Ball. Um, so I'm going to go Clefable. A tough turn. I really need to draw cards. I really, really need to draw cards. So I'm going to Ultra Ball and get rid of you and you. I hate that I have to. Because I want to keep the other Clefable in my hand, right? We're kind of like past the point where getting those metal energies or whatever is going to matter. So I'm going to refinement here. Get rid of that. Arvin? So we play it, right? And we're going to put the Defiant Span into our hand. Uh, I mean, I guess I could put Level Ball into the hand, but that doesn't really help. Maybe Super Odd's better, just in case I need it for some kind of clutch play. Yeah. And I think we just end turn, and we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Tempting Trap with more wild doesn't really help them. Not in this position, because they need to take prizes to win, right? They could also do nothing. That's also an option. Um, so yeah, uh, if, if I can just go back to what I was saying before, Sign Painter, be because I, I I'm also familiar with uh, you know just like the history of TPCI's tournament structures, competitive formats, and and all that stuff. Um, yeah, it, it, it's interesting to me too. All right, so now. I mean, all, all that's left is... Okay, so I think we send up the Mew. Because we're going to use this Clefable to attack. And we basically just need boss's orders. And we win. This is going to be a tough one. But we'll see. Holy moly, dude. Holy moly. The game wanted us to win. Um, okay. Yep. Cool. GG. Wow. It worked? Well, look, if you enjoy <laughs> oddball decks like the Clefable Scissor, please consider subscribing to me on the YouTube. And I'll see you in the next live stream or video.